Thanks for joining us for What's New at CFI, where we bring you insights from our latest courses and behind the scenes conversations with subject matter experts. Get ahead and stay ahead with the latest from CFI. Hello and welcome to the What's New at CFI podcast. My name is Asim Khan. I'm a subject matter expert and instructor at CFI. I'm joined by my colleague, Duncan McKean, who is also a subject matter expert and instructor. Welcome, Duncan. Thank you. Delighted to be here. Continuing our series on uh, financial planning and analysis, we're now talking about, Duncan, your work in expanding the model to include contractors. We've previously discussed model design and then formatting and revenue forecasting. We've discussed uh, headcount forecasting and analysis. Mm -hmm. And now we're at contractors. I took the course recently. It's short. It's only an hour long. So kudos for you on that. Uh, what can you tell us that's new in this course and why it was a necessary bolt on to what came before it? Yeah, definitely. It's there's definitely um, quite a few similarities to the previous course on, on headcount forecasting and analysis. Some of the differences here, part of the reason this one is shorter and simpler is with, of course, with contractors, there's no need to be forecasting or analyzing benefits or bonuses for them. So it definitely simplifies things a little bit. But there's some there's some small differences that are a little bit nuanced. For example, with the contractor, especially a contractor where they're using like a per diem charge um, to the company, you want to be calculating how many available work days there are in a given period. And it's not as straightforward as it sounds like in a month with 31 days, for example, you may only have 21 work days um, because you're wanting to exclude uh, weekends and, and public holidays from that count. So, but thankfully there's some really interesting formulas in Excel that are designed exactly for that purpose that we introduce in the- Can you name a couple while we're on the subject? I can, but I actually don't want to, because that's going to be one of the challenges in the course, and I would literally spoil it for, for everyone. <laughs> if so I then there's it. intrigue in addition to education. On this exactly. One. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Excellent. And uh, so the need for this, I presume, is because at least in the States, there's quite a preponderance of jobs that are basically just kind of contractor jobs where you get the 1099 form and uh, there are no benefits right? No health insurance, no benefits at all. You know, there might be a, a bonus, who knows, but so since so much of employment is going in that direction or is in, the, is in that place at the moment, is that what uh, kind of propelled the need for a uh, contractor analysis? Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's certainly um, a trend that we're seeing and it's a very, very valid point. We definitely wanted to put in the functionality for forecasting employees and contractors as well from a learning perspective so that the people taking the courses could learn the different nuances of the two courses and also they can be different from a cash flow timing perspective as well with company employees you would have benefits accrued benefits charges that would generally be going out at the same time as the costs associated with those employees but then of course the the bonus payouts can be very, very different timing from a cash flow perspective. And then with contractors, you might see something like just net 30 day payments. So generally getting paid the month after the work was completed would be fairly standard um, for contractors. So we wanted to just introduce those two and have them both in the course, but we, we definitely are seeing more companies using contractors more. And um, so for instance, uh, kind of a live case, we had a large corporate client and they said, uh, we don't need the contractor bit, right? Um, this was before we had rolled mm. the course out and I hadn't known it was envisioned to have all of this in one Excel file, one model. And, mm -hmm. you know, a company that doesn't need that functionality doesn't really have to use it, but you can just leave that whole bit of the model blank, right? And exactly. I mean, yeah, if you, th if you thought you may use it at some point in the future, you'd want to just zero it out, but leave all of the functionality and the formulas in place. If you knew... With certainty, you wouldn't be using it. Then you could literally just delete those rows out of the appropriate tabs in the model uh, pretty easily. Okay, great. Well, um, it was a, a good course. It was it was short. It was to the point, and um, it enhances what went before. So, um, thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next time when we discuss debt and capex modeling. You're welcome. Thanks, Sim. 
Thank you, Duncan. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.